So Tom just returned from his second trip to Tanzania in June of 2017. What was your turnout like in Bunda? Well, Rick, our turnout was fantastic. Normally with Timothy Leadership Training, we have oh, on the order of 20 to 30 pastors and church leaders who attend the training. Uh, in Dabao City, Philippines, we had 40, and that was a very large turnout. But here in Bunda, Tanzania, we had over 100 pastors and church leaders uh, come out for this training, and we extended the training one extra day uh, so that we could also address some community issues along the way. Interesting. So what are your plans for TLT in 2018? Well, we're going to go back. The first course in uh, Tanzania was so successful that uh, we have been invited to go back and uh, deliver course two and course three. So my plan is to return in January and then also again in June. Um, we're also hoping to start course one up in the city of Musoma, which is about uh, 90 kilometers from Bunda north and right on uh, the uh, shore of Lake Victoria. Uh, we're excited about that possibility, so I might be doing course two in Bunda and course one in Musoma in January, and then course three in Bunda and course two in Musoma in June. So the prospects look terrific. Plus, we had the three projects that we were also working on. Let's talk about those for a minute. How about water? Well, the water supply sustainability issue uh, is a, a tremendously important issue for the region. When I was there last year, uh, I saw that uh, in the rural areas, nothing was growing. And I asked, how come there aren't crops there? And they said, well, the crops are dependent upon rainfall and we've been in a drought. And I said, well, wait a minute, you're right next to Lake Victoria. I mean, Lake Victoria is the second largest lake in the world by, uh, by area. Uh, why aren't you pulling water from the lake? And they say, well, it's too expensive. We can't do that uh, for those people. And so I thought, well, gee, is there anything that we can do? I came home, I did some research, and I found a book written by the chief engineer of Bunda District for water. And he had, actually it was his master's thesis, and he turned it into a book, and I was able to get that book through Amazon.com. And I read it, and I had Takiko read it, who is the pastor there in Bunda. And then the next day he said, well, Tom, just found out that the man's wife is a member of my church. And so... Small world. Oh, it was incredible. So uh, we arranged uh, to have a meeting with him. He now works in southern Tanzania, but he agreed to come up to Bunda to meet with us. And we spent about two hours with him. Uh, asking him for what has happened since he wrote the book in 2011. So we got a complete update on uh, what the water situation is there. The water situation to the township is pretty good. They've done some upgrades, but the water situation to the rural areas is still really, really weak. They just do not have a good, sustainable, long-term water supply. Were you able to meet with any local officials when you were there? We were. After we met with uh, Engineer Deule, uh, then we also met with the highest ranking political figure in the area. She is appointed by the president of Tanzania, wow. and she's called the district commissioner. And uh, she actually asked to meet with us because she heard what was going on. So we met with her for about an hour in her office, and she was just so encouraging about uh, the, the things that we were proposing to do uh, with water sustainability, but then also with the other two projects. So I would say we had a really tremendous time and uh, we're, we're looking forward to what we might do in the future. How was your proposal received? Uh, the proposal was received very, very well. We presented it to the pastors at the conference uh, so that they would get an idea of what we were trying to do. We're looking for entrepreneurial uh, young professionals who might be interested in stepping into this and forming a private company to address the problem. Not in competition with the government, but working with the government, but definitely a private sector solution as opposed to a public solution. And, uh, and that was very well received. Did you have any other meetings with regard to water sustainability? Well, actually we did. Uh, when we went up to the city of Musoma, 
Uh, I was scheduled to speak to a class of entrepreneurial students. It's like a business class. And uh, the class is taught by the assistant pastor at Tokiko's church. Oh my, it's yeah. a small world. Oh, it's amazing. So uh, we went up to Musoma. We drove there. It took about an hour and a half. And we met with these uh, students, about 30 or so of these students. And so we presented to them our project and our idea uh, to see if there might be some there in that class who might have an interest and want to uh, follow up on it. And there was definitely interest. And I would say that the next time we go back, we will want to meet with those uh, students again. And uh, I, at that time, I think we'll have a more uh, formalized plan at this point. We were just kind of sharing the vision. But our hope is that we can bring back a plan with some some details to it. So that's where it goes from here, is to try and flesh this out? Yeah, the next step is uh, for us to research equipment. Uh, what we're looking at are uh, pumps to bring the water in. Of course, you have to lay the pipeline uh, as well, but that's not going to be an issue according to the uh, governmental figures that we talked to. Uh, and then you have to power the pumps. So we're looking at what are the options, perhaps a solar power uh, grid that would uh, power the pump. And if we can get that unit into a field, you know, like an acre to 10 acres, that kind of thing, uh, we want to see if it's cost effective. And it will be cost effective if the farmers can grow enough crops and take them to market. And we may have to help with the marketing as well. Uh, so that they can get a return on their uh, crops uh, so that they can uh, pay for the uh, system and then also have enough to reinvest into their project. Well, if they're, if they're putting their own money into this, yeah. then they're going to be much more anxious to make sure it works. Well, that's why we're thinking a private sector solution would be better. The governmental solutions, as Deule documents in his book, have not been sustainable. They work for a year or two, and then parts start to break down, there's no maintenance, uh, there's nobody to repair the systems, and they fall into disuse. So we're thinking if there's a private sector company there, they will have obviously a vested interest in making sure everything works properly, and they will be the ones supervising the maintenance of the equipment, the repair of the equipment, and all of those sorts of things. So we think that that uh, might be a better solution. And the people in Tanzania that we talked with, uh, particularly the high-ranking government officials, they felt that this was a good idea and they really wanted to see it move forward. So we're working with the pastors uh, in terms of training for them uh, to increase their ministry capability. The first course was caring for God's people and it is about visiting uh, people in their churches and in their community. The second course, which we will uh, present in January, is about stewardship. So we'll be able to talk about some financial that things and stewardship of talents and time, and as well as financial resources. So that's kind of where we're headed in Tanzania. Sounds great.